Hello there. Uh, we're going to get started in just a moment here. Um, in the meantime, I uh, just want to give you a quick disclaimer here. Um, we are recording this session, so if you don't consent to being recorded, uh, please remain off camera and off mute and share your questions via the comment box, and that way we'll be able to capture them for the session today. Ah, I see a lot of folks are already um, trickling in here. Hey, Stacy, Panchita, Bernadine, Roger, Javon, Timber, Richard, thank you all for joining. Awesome. And we are at the one minute mark. So I just wanted to say hello and welcome. My name is Kylan Kester and I'm the program coordinator for the Google for Startups team here in the US. Thank you all for joining us in this awesome collaboration with the team at Goody Nation for the 2023 Black and Latino Founders Fund Ask Me Anything session. Again, as a quick disclaimer, this session will be recorded. And if you don't consider being recorded, please remain off camera and on, on mute. Um, but during this session, you'll be able to hear more about this year's selection criteria and best practices for submitting your application for the 2023 Black and Latino Founders Funds. Um, throughout this call, you'll hear more from members of the US program team, um, some of our amazing partners who help Google for Startups achieve the mission of helping startups grow, and a few of our previous Black and Latino Founder Fund recipients. As you have questions during this event, please add them to the Q&A tab. There's a comment box where you're able to add them. And one of our moderators will work to get your answers to your questions. In the event that we are not able to get to all questions, we will provide a session recap following this call, which will include an application success guide with best practices for applying and other frequently asked questions. I encourage everyone to stay tuned and engage as we look forward to ending the session with a special surprise and a thank you for joining. So up next, I'd love to invite Victoria, Danny, Tony Wilkins, and Joey to the stage on the panel for what we'll be doing for Google for Startups in 2023. Awesome. Thank you all for joining. Uh, can we start with just brief introductions of you all, starting with Victoria? Thanks so much, Kai. I also love, uh, it was Tony Wilkins. Maybe one day we can all get the full name, but until now, uh, I'm Victoria Wordola. I'm the US Startup Partner Manager dialing in from Chicago. I'm so excited to be here. I have the pleasure and joy of working with all of our founders on the programming and with both our Black and Latino Founders Fund. And I pass it over to Danny. Hi, everybody. My name is Danny Navarro from the Google for Startups team. I lead marketing here for GFS and am very, very closely involved with our Black and Latino Founders Fund. It's great to be here today. I will pass it over to Tony. And you're on mute if you're um, speaking. Sorry about that. No worries. Hi, I'm Tony Wilkins. I am a longtime angel investor and serve as the provider of advice on funding and reality checks for people who go through Google for startups, both during the program and afterwards. I'll pass it back to Kai. Awesome. We have one more uh, awesome person that also introduced Joey Womack over at Goody Nation. Hey, everybody. Joey Womack, founder, CEO of Goody Nation. Super excited for this conversation. Um, and uh, yeah, let's, re let's get right, right into it. I love it. And thank you all so much. Now, Victoria, I'd love it if you could share just a brief overview of the Google for Startups Founders Fund and why Google is even doing this. Of course. Yeah. Thanks so much, Kai. So the um, Black Founders Fund was first started um, in 2020, spearheaded by the incredible Jewel Burks. Um, and with all the success we've seen with all the Black founders we've supported, some of which you'll be hearing from later today, um, you know, we have been able to expand that work globally and have in turn been able to launch our Latino Founders Fund last year. So now we have both the joy of supporting Black founders through our Black Founders Fund and Latino founders through our Latino Founders Fund, which essentially means we're able to provide non-dilutive capital along with wraparound support to really enable their business growth. So last year, founders received um, a variety of different support and resourcing, including amazing investor advising from Tony here, amazing community support from Joey, as well as therapy services and executive coaching, extensive sales training, um, extensive like data privacy sessions, sessions on Google Cloud, and really anything to support their their themselves as founders and their businesses grow. 
Thanks, Victoria. As a follow-up, what can you share with us about the selection criteria for the upcoming 2023 Black and Latino Founders Fund? How will we be picking the upcoming cohort? Definitely. So historically, Google for Startups has always focused on supporting um, diverse, meaning um, you know, Black, Latino-founded companies through our funds. Um, however, for this year, we're specifically looking for companies who are already post-revenue. So they're really looking to grow and accelerate their revenue. So that's definitely one of the key changes I'd say from previous years to this year is we're really looking for the companies that are post-revenue. So really top line to kind of highlight the criteria um, as there are a few elements here. So I'd say first criteria, definitely if you're watching here, we're looking for post-revenue, even if you're early revenue, um, that's totally okay. Um, we also want to make sure that the founders that are joining our community and are joining the programming will have the bandwidth to really take advantage of all of the resources. So we're really looking for founders, at least one founder, to be full time dedicated to their startup. We're also, uh, you know, we want to build a community. So we want to make sure that the businesses are established within the U.S., um, and, you know, being that we are Google for startups, we're looking for startups that are going to be scalable in nature, as well as tech enabled. They have something that will allow them to reach a very large target audience um, instead of just supporting very regionally or locally. We also want to make sure that we're supporting startups that are still earlier on in their journey as we feel like we are best resource to support that stage. So really looking for companies that have raised less than about 5 million um, at the time of application. And I say about 5 million um, because, you know, if it's five and, a, a, you know, a quarter, then, you know, you still might be a good fit. However, if you've raised 10 million, likely at that point, you might be a little um, too late stage for us. And then, you know, given that we are part of Google, we are very well resourced and supported from helping startups grow via our, our products, such as Google Cloud, Google Play, Google Ads. So we really want to make sure we're prioritizing the startups that already are on those and using those platforms and products so we can make those relevant connections internally and in turn enable that growth and success even further. I love that. And, you know, one of the things that, you know, I want to just share with this group again is as you have questions about the criteria or anything that we've been discussing so far, definitely let them let us know in the comments. We want to make sure that we capture your questions as well. Um, Victoria, there's also another component to the application, the video. Um, can you share a little bit more of like the video submission and what founders can expect from that? Definitely. So this is historically an area where um, uh, I'd say you know, make sure you dedicate some time. It, it doesn't necessarily matter like the production, uh, you know, uh, value of this. You don't need to be in like Lightroom making a short story. However, it's, it's more so about making sure that you're answering the questions. On the application, you'll see very clearly outline the questions in the order that we are looking for. And really, this is an opportunity for our team to start getting to know you and your story. So just make sure you take time to answer those specific questions in the order and, and let your personality come through because we really, really want to start getting to know you as the founder. I love that. And, you know, we'll also be able to kind of share an application success guide following this call, as I mentioned earlier, that we'll share more about the questions that we'll be asking and just some best practices for um, approaching these questions. Um, now, Victoria mentioned a lot about our criteria that Google for Startups is looking for in the companies that are scalable. Joey, I'd love to jump the question over to you. Um, can you provide some examples of the types of scalable tech enabled companies that have gone through the Google for Startups and Goody Nation programming? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I truly, I, I feel lucky, right? I get to spend a lot of time with these amazing founders and watching them do it in their thing. And so when I think about companies that are doing well or best positioned uh, for success, and you'll hear from a few others uh, shortly, but I think of companies like uh, Four Degrees out of Chicago. I think of Canaries out of Dallas, Texas, uh, focused on DEI and, and making sure companies have a way to measure uh, their DEI strategies. I think of Boxed Up out of Atlanta, Georgia, Donald Boone's an amazing founder, uh, working on providing uh, access to uh, equipment for content creators. I think of uh, Trade Block out of Austin, Texas, focused on that sneaker reseller market. And so some of the things that really stand out, and I'll kind of go into this later, um, 
on the startup side, at least, is, you know, kind of digging into what Victoria said earlier. I mean, these are markets that are already big or are projected to grow bigger moving forward. They also have a great brand uh, and also the product is is very slick and uh, just amazing as well. I love that. And I'm sure you all, you see a ton of really big companies. And so really excited that you're a partner that works with us to help achieve this mission. Um, now, once founders submit an application, can we talk a little bit more about how submissions are reviewed? Victoria, can you share a little bit more on the review process? And Danny, I'd love for you to chime in as well where it might make sense. Definitely. And I do want to call out, I see some questions coming in. So I'll just bake in my answer, uh, hopefully answering some of the questions here in the chat. So with the 5 million number that I had called out in terms of funding raised today at the time of application, it's okay if you have not raised any funding going into application if you are post revenue. So the 5 million is more of a, a light ceiling versus a floor. So if you are a startup who you're post revenue and you have not raised any funding, then you know you are still well positioned to apply. Um, so wanted to just clarify that. And for all of the companies there um, who are maybe pre-revenue, um, few call outs here. We do actually have a Google Cloud for Startups program that has an offering for earlier stage companies. So we'll make sure to include that in our follow-up email. And there's also just incredible um, programs that work with earlier stage companies outside of Google for startups. So definitely recommend finding one that specifically focuses on pre-revenue companies. In regards um, to kind of thinking about, you know, what our approach is, it's really multifaceted. We want to identify the companies where us as Google for startups is truly best positioned to support your growth because our success is directly tied to your success as founders. Um, and, and that's truly what energizes me. And so, you know, once you all apply and submit all of your details in terms of like your business reporting, in terms of your video, we have a very rigorous process where we have reviewers that have experience working with founders as investors. We have, we partner with Goody Nation, who also sees many um, startups and is very well known in the ecosystem. We look at specifically, you know, how engaged are you already leveraging Google products? So we take it really seriously because we want to make sure we're developing something that is an unbiased approach that is going to allow us to identify the startups that we are best positioned to support as Google for startups. And then we'd definitely love to um, get Danny's perspective as well as he plays a very critical role in the process. Yeah, thanks, Victoria. I um, have had the opportunity to look at now hundreds and hundreds or I guess over thousands of applications for founder funds and have started to just think about a few, a few trends that come to mind, which I want to share. Um, my job when I'm looking at these applications is to really just have a pretty good and deep understanding of the story of behind the business. Um, and, and one, and if I were to kind of lend some tips of things that I've been able to see, you know, some things that come to mind is um, to really feel comfortable around painting a, a full picture um, and not just answering a single question, but, um, you know, coming up with a stance or a narrative for your application, just that one key message that you want us to leave with when we look at your application. Um, secondly, the nice balance of that is brevity and succinctness. Um, how can you be able to tell that story, a holistic story, but do it in a way that is snappy, is gonna make us like, you know, be able to recall that amongst uh, a lot of other great quality founders uh, and applications that we're seeing. Um, I think a clear articulation of, of why Google, ever since we launched our founder funds, um, we've always wanted this program to be more than a check, um, more than just, hey, here's um, some cash, uh, good luck. Um, instead, it's something that we'd like to be able to have a close relationship with our founders and be able to work really deeply with um, over time. And so we want to understand why should Google, like how can we be uniquely helpful beyond just the capital? Um, are there products that you already sort of know about or programs or teams around Google that, that you're familiar with um, that if you had a deeper integration to or a 
um, a product that if you were a bit more trained up on um, or a product that Google could be um, better supported on with your solutions, um, then let us know that. I mean, we want to know sort of why why Google. Um, and then lastly, you know, we want to know, you know, why the market, why the product and, and, and why you, you know, bring those three things together um, to help us get to know your application a little bit better. So I guess those are some things that come to mind if I were to wrap up in a few bullet points again. It's um, a holistic application, do it with brevity, figure out, you know, why Google um, beyond the check and help us understand the uh, market product founder fit. That's I it. Love that. I love that, Danny. It's kind of like be brief, be bright and state the why, you know? Mm -hmm. And I see in the in the in the chat too, there's some questions around like, you know, we, we were mentioning like best position to support, um, you know, the company as Google for startups. Um, I see a few questions coming through on that front. And I think with this, we're going to be looking at what your stated objectives are in the application. So there's a few places in the application where we'll ask about your goals, we'll ask about your objectives. And when looking at that, we just want to make sure that we are rightly resourced and have the right um, connections, have the right resources to be able to truly, truly make an impact on those business objectives. That's what we'll be looking for specifically um, in the application. Thank you so much, Victoria. And I really appreciate you answering these questions in real time. Um, Tony, you're also a part of the review process as an external reviewer. Um, I'd love for you to share a little bit more of what you look for as an investor coming from your point of view. Sure, thanks, Kai. Uh, and welcome to everybody who's here listening to this. I'm gonna give you what I would call my cheat codes. If I go back to what Danny said earlier, I'm a big fan of brevity, of telling me exactly what you're looking for right off the bat and I'll give you a cheat code. Show us your five word description of your business. If you can describe in your business five words, what you're doing, what you're trying to accomplish, how you're going to change the world, that then allows us to think through how you fit with the program, how we can support you and how we can decide who and how we bring to bear the resources to fix you up. So be able to be very crisp and comprehensive about what you're looking for. As an investor, uh, supporting this effort. I'm looking for those things that are going to prove, at least in our minds from what you send us, your ability to be successful. And as Victoria called out earlier, there's some simple things that people just really kind of blow through often in their effort to complete the, complete the application. Read the questions, answer the questions, run your application by somebody else so that they understand what you're thinking because as a founder you're doing a lot of different things but please take the time and pause to put your answer together in a succinct fashion that helps us sort through the thousands of applications we're going to get be be willing to stand out i will tell you that as an early stage investor mostly in the pre-seed seed space what i'm trying to help this team do is look through to the application and see if there are six characteristics that a founder demonstrates. And if you can do this in your presentation, that would be great, it'll help us. Integrity, if you, if you don't have an answer that you think is great, default to the truth. Better to tell us that you have $2,000, $2,156 of monthly revenue as, to, as we have substantial revenues. Don't do that. Tell us what you've got, let us work with that. Integrity, coachability. Are you coming to the Founders Academy to say, I'm looking for some help, or do you kind of think you've got it figured out? If you're in the latter camp, we're probably not gonna be able to help you out because we bring a lot of coaching because we want a lot of success and Google has a lot of resources. Chemistry, we wanna feel who you are. Give us your own authentic description of who your business is. Don't worry about using the King's English or the Queen's Spanish or whatever, just give us the best representation of you so we know how to engage with you. Uh, and then resourcefulness, resilience, and responsiveness. Uh, you know, to the extent that you can do this, try to get your application in early as opposed to running right up against the deadline and getting it done. So these are standard things that people have to say uh, to let us know who you are. And for the Latino Founders Funds, if there's a phrase or a term that you think really uh, punches what it is you do and you want to give it to us in Spanish, go ahead. We're trying to figure out how to make you successful, but we want to know the authentic you that we're working with so that you can put you into this cohort 
and serve you as best you can so we can share your success moving forward. I think that's all I've got, Kai. Anything else? No, that was awesome. Thank you so much, Tony. I was telling Joey earlier, I wish StreamYards had emojis. I would have like hearted that you gave some really great advice. Um, to that point, Joey, did you also have anything from your perspective as an external reviewer that you would um, offer as any kind of uh, feedback or thoughts? Yeah, yeah. So a few things. One, um, so I'm again, I'm a start, I'm a startup founder myself, right? I'm a founder CEO. I, I as a nonprofit founder, I have to apply for a lot of grants to keep these lights on here at Goody Nation. So I, I'm in your shoes, right? And I've been in your shoes also as a as a software startup founder as well. So a few things to kind of keep in mind. We know as a startup founder, you have to step into the shoes of your user and or your customer and feel their pain in order, in order to solve a problem for them. So let me give you some insight into uh, what it looks like to be a reviewer of applications. I've done thousands and thousands across not only this initiative, but others. There's, there are more than likely will be thousands of applications just for the Black Founders Fund, Latino Founders Fund. And so think about and, and, and it what a decently short amount of time to review. So if you were given thousands of applications and you had a decently short amount of time to do it, think about what you will be looking for and what things will start to, to, to stick out to you, quite honestly. So one of my my first tips is to step into the shoes of a reviewer as you are crafting your answers. Right. Some of it was alluded to earlier about being succinct and, and, and brevity and stuff like that. But another a hidden part is to how is is to be unique. So how can you make yourself stick out to the to from the crowd relative to a few things? One, the problem you are solving. The the, the state of technology today uh, allows for like lots of startups to be created, which is an amazing thing. Like more opportunity is always amazing. It also means that there are typically a lot of startups, partic particularly at this stage. That are solving the same problem or in the same industry. So think very clearly about how you're going to separate yourself from everyone else by describing the problem you're focused on and then obviously the solution. So what unique carrot or insight do you have into the problem that very few people have? Another thing is going to be around your experience. I know someone else uh, uh, asked earlier uh, in the comments around, especially if you're a non-technical founder, how might you separate yourself or best or best position yourself to succeed? So part of that is going to be your unique insight into the problem. Perhaps it's around your industry or your work experience. And what I will also share with diverse founders is don't discount all of your lived experience. I see in many cases, diverse founders don't talk about the jobs they had as teenagers or while they were young adults because they assume it doesn't it doesn't make sense or it doesn't matter. That stuff definitely matters. It informs, usually it informs the decisions you're making now as a, as a founder and as a CEO. But again, you got to do it, do this in a brief, brief, uh, from a brief perspective. So don't discount your life experience, your lived experience. Set yourself apart by talking about how unique, unique you are. And then also, finally, I would say, use this as an opportunity to get better. Use the application as an opportunity to get better. So you're going to get asked a series of questions that you should already have the answers to. And I understand as a startup founder, things move fast. So you might get asked a question on who is your user and the problem you're solving. And that answer may have changed within, within the past 30 to 60 days. So as you're, at, as you're answering the question, make sure you're using it almost as a strategic uh, session and you get better. Right. That's how you can make best use of the application and also the time you're going to put into crafting it. That's like amazing. Thank you so much. We're getting a lot of really great feedback in the chat. Folks are really resonating with you all's tips and everything. So thank you all for sharing this. Victoria, did you have anything else to add? Yeah, I was just going to bounce off Joey's advice here. It's a tactical one in nature, but I think very helpful. So our application, what I recommend actually for all applications, this one or really anyone you apply, start in a Word doc, start in a Google doc, start outside of the application. I find that that um, kind of gives you, as Joey had mentioned, clarity of thought in regards to being like, this is going to be good for my business because I'm getting clarity on answers I should already have. And then you actually have that saved right? And it's more of an iterative process. So that way you're applying for another program, another grant, 
it's you're, you're iterating on a base that you already have and that you could feel good and confident about versus feeling like I'm just restarting every single application. So definitely more tactical, um, but I definitely think very <laughs> helpful, especially um, echoing Tony's sentiment. You know, application is going to go live on February 28th. It'll be live through March 24th. So it's a bit of time, but start early, get it into a Word document or a Google Doc, um, make sure people edit it and submit something you truly feel good about versus doing a half court shot. I love that. Thank you so much for that additional um, thought there. We do have some outstanding questions from the group before we kind of like wrap up this part of the panel. So I wanted to go ahead and start to address some of those. Um, one of the questions that so came out um, was if I'm a black, um, if I'm black and my co-founder is Latino, can we apply to both funds? The answer is yes. So you will be considered, um, you will, you'll need to submit um, an application for the black founders fund and the Latino founders fund. However, you will be eligible to only receive one award. So if you were to receive the black founders fund, then that's the award you would receive. You would not be able to receive both funds. Thank you, Victoria. Um, another question that came through the, uh, the chat here was, uh, can you share about the structure of the program? Definitely. I um, want to give some space too, to Joey as uh, Goody Nation is a really, really key um, partner in bringing the programmatic ma uh, magic to our founders. We really start with bringing founders in and getting objectives really crystallized. And then at that point, we work with the Goody Nation team to kind of assess through the lens of investor readiness. Where is your company um, from a product perspective, from a team perspective, from a strategy perspective? From then, um, we really have a focus on making sure that you are well positioned to accelerate growth. And that's directly tied to sales. So we provide really extensive sales training, sales coaching. And from that, you also all during that time, you're receiving access to free mental health support. So therapy, executive coaching, you get the advising of the amazing Tony here. And then in addition to that, you're able to throughout this six month period, um, access office hour mentor support from Googlers and a variety of different topics, everything from UX to Google ads. Um, so that's really kind of the core of our programmatic offer. I love it. Thank you so much. Um, one other question that I have here is around, do you um, offer feedback on applications? We would love to offer feedback. Unfortunately, as Joey had alluded, you know, this is, you know, we get so many applications and if we are going to give feedback, we would want to make sure that it's actionable. And for that volume of applications, it's just not actionable. So while we would love to do that, Unfortunately, we cannot give feedback and we also cannot meet individually with anybody ahead of the applications. We want to make sure this process is as unbiased, fair and equitable as can be, which is why we cannot meet with you beforehand and cannot provide feedback after the fact. Danny? Yeah, to that end, um, we have uh, created some resources, which we'll share soon um, to bring together the sort of best tips uh, and tricks on the application that we've learned over the years to be able to help you um, before you get started. So anything that we mentioned here, we're going to be able to uh, gather in a single place um, to, to sort of guide you through every, almost every question or portion of the application. Yes, we're looking forward to sending that out following this call. So um, thank you for alluding to that too, um, Danny. Um, so that kind of wraps up most of the questions that we've gotten so far. It looks like we just got one more here. Will there be more info discussions um, leading up to the opening of the applications? Um, at this time, we don't currently have any plan, but as you all have questions and things like that, definitely would love to kind of get those in and make sure that, um, that there are things that we can include in our success guide that we share with you all, which will be a live document. Um, we will make sure that we address those questions as well. Um, and then there was one other question actually that just came in that also builds on some other questions that were asked. Um, uh, can you be an active fundraising in the active fundraising process and still be eligible to apply? Um, and Victoria, I'd love for you to also clarify, like you mentioned that there's like a kind of cap to how much has been raised. Um, can you kind of clarify like how, like how that works in terms of uh, how much is raised at time of application versus um, when you actually, you know, raise that fund? Oh, you're saying like, just, I want to make sure I'm understanding, like, is the um, award counted in that amount? Is that the question? Um, it's saying, can you still be actively fundraising? So oh, yeah, definitely. So essentially, if you're, you know, actively fundraising, but on your cap table, 
says 5 million or 4.8, then you're eligible for the award, even if the round you're trying to raise is 10 million. It's just, what do you have on your cap table at the time of application? Um, and you will see there are certain call outs on the application that um, if you are a finalist, we you know reserve the right to actually ask for those uh, different aspects such as your cap table. So uh, yeah, it's just at the time. Where are awesome. you at with that? And can I, can awesome. I add something to you while we're, while we're here? I just want to make a very point to amplify what Joey said earlier. Those of the people who are on this call right now are going to be submitting applications to pitch presentations to Google and certainly at some point to investors, angels, VCs, angel groups, and you're not going to get feedback. Don't feel bad. This is an exercise where we've crafted a lot of very specific questions that will help you present yourself as clearly as possible to us as we go through these things. Use this as a way to push forward, knowing that you're not going to get feedback from a lot of the different people. You're really looking just for the feedback from the people who are interested in helping, supporting, and growing you. So flush yourself from being mad about not hearing back if you don't hear anything and focus on trying to find the people who love you and will be supporting you for the timing that you intersect with the opportunity that you have right now. I love that, Tony. And we just got a really interesting question from Paris and that I'd love to kind of wrap this up on um, is do e-commerce company sites qualify for the program? Yeah, I think what we're looking for is having some sort of technological or a very like unique selling point advantage. So, for example, like a company that is leveraging e-commerce in a very distinctive way, of course. However, if you are just straightforward selling a good for example, if I was selling cookies, you can clearly tell I'm hungry. It's lunchtime here. If I was selling cookies on my website and that's that's pretty much it, um, then you know that wouldn't be a good fit for our program. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much. Now that we've covered the criteria and selection process, we thought it would also be nice to share some examples of how some of our highly engaged founders in the program have both approached these questions and also about their experience in the Black and Latino Founders Fund program. Um, so without further ado, I'd love to invite Danny Navarro um, and also some of our Black Founders Fund recipients, Jim Gibbs, the CEO of Meter Feeder, uh, Courtney Colmer, the CEO of Uplevel Communications, and from our inaugural Latino Founders Fund, Camille Padilla over at C uh, the CEO of Vodium. Awesome. Thanks, Kai. Um, and I think that, you know, we can help answer as many questions as possible, but it would be just best to um, hear from founders that we've been working with uh, straight, straight from them. So please continue to uh, send your questions our way. Um, today, I'm joined by a few of the founders who have participated in our Black Founders Fund and Latino Founders Fund. Um, if we could just do a quick round robin of introductions, that would be awesome. Um, Camille, if we could start with you. Yeah. Hey, everyone. My name is Camille Padilla. I'm the co-founder of Vodium, which is your secret tool to communicate confidently on video. I'm based in Chicago, Illinois, and we started the desktop application as a dream off the sides of our desks during the pandemic. I was vice president at a political advertising firm, and I had to quickly pivot and produce multi-million commercials with a teleprompter that was built for everyone and accessible to anyone anywhere. Well, we soon found out that no such thing had been invented. So we at Vodium at the height of the pandemic built a secret tool that hybrid professionals can use to work on their terms and in return conduct better business on camera. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. Jim, you're up next. All right. Uh, I, I'm not doing anything as interesting. I'm in parking. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, um, hi, my name is Jim Gibbs. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Meter Feeder. Uh, we enable internet connected devices to pay for parking. And uh, the first thing that everybody says is, oh, well, I have an app where I can pay for parking. Well, that's cute. This is not 2007. There are other things that are connected to the, the internet, like your car. Um, so we help uh, fleet vehicles uh, pay for parking automatically by turning their vehicles off. And um, yeah, very glad to be here. Thank you. Masley, Courtney. Hello, everyone. I'm Courtney Colmer, founder and CEO of Uplevel Communications. We are a marketplace that connects companies in need of marketing or communication support with vetted freelancers and small agencies. So think of us as a uh, 
you can think of it kind of like an Upwork or a Fiverr, but for highly skilled and experienced um, communications and marketing talent. Um, I am a non-technical founder. I've spent over 20 years um, throughout the marketing and communications ecosystem um, from television to corporate communications to freelance consulting and integrated marketing and communications roles. Um, and so in that experience, um, going to something mentioned earlier in my full lived professional experience, I have intimate knowledge um, and direct access to both sides of the marketplace that my company serves. Awesome. Thank you, Courtney. Um, and in the comments, Oliver said, I could have used Vodium during my pitch today. Um, Oliver, make have no fear. Um, Camille, we'll hustle you for a download um, probably mid-panel. So be on the lookout for, for that. Um, but you know, enough uh, from the Google team. We'd love to hear from the founders. Um, you know, we'll start off with just how, how founder funds. How has this impacted um, your business? Maybe a couple examples of, of um, you know what this has has done for for your startup. Jim, can we start with you? Yes, you can. And um, shout out to Ticket Avengers, by the way. Uh, so the the founders fund is well, okay. So Black Founders Fund was super useful because the best way to think about it is, you know, I've stopped trying to convince people. I'm tired of it. I'm sick of people not believing me. I didn't really go into my background, but I've been, this year, we 40 years for me writing software. Um, and I've built everything from train safety software to medical software. Actually, before I started Meter Feeder, I built a platform that handled about 30% of all the mobile retail sales in the US. So if you bought three things off your, your phone, um, you've probably touched my software before. Um, and people just didn't believe me. So with that being said, uh, when all of a sudden Google was like, I believe Jim, <laughs> it became a really different conversation, right? So uh, the people who were on the fence about like, is Jim legit? Uh, they were able to, to sort of land on the believer side of things. And it really just helped out because you know, if I'm working with people who believe in me, it's really easy to, to gather everyone together and create that narrative in order for, for us to find success. And um, yeah, like uh, it's, it's a whole lot of hard work, but uh, you know, the Black Founders Fund really helped, you know, push over those dominoes in order to get the momentum that we needed. Awesome, thank you. Um, we certainly believe Jim, this man is brilliant. Um, Courtney, would you mind uh, mind sharing a little bit about um, the program and its impact for you? Sure. So um, obviously, you know, every time I talk about Black Founders Fund, and I think one of the sexiest things that people get excited about um, is the cash award. And um, that is incredibly valuable. You know, as a result of that, we were able to um, grow our team and add resources that were much needed. But what I really um, get excited about and try to emphasize when I talk to people, um, and hopefully you were listening to the speakers closely in the first session, but it really is such a comprehensive program um, that cares about um, the fullness of founders and the wholeness um, in your overall success. So from the sales training, um, the therapy resources that are available, um, office hours with Tony, which I've had a number of, you know, I've spent time with him on a number, a couple of occasions with really clear challenges around um, capital and fundraising that he helped me to think through. Um, we were paired with a success manager who's just been an amazing, ours, DJ Lewis, shout out to him, has just been such a great thought partner um, to our organization. And so um, you get out of it like any program, what you put into it and how you take it, choose to take advantage of those resources. Um, and so, you know, even as we're thinking of next versions of our product development, um, again, my success manager knows the cloud well, you know, so we're really able to partner with them in that sense. Um, and then the last thing I would say um, that really I think is starting to come into fruition more recently for us is simply the visibility. Um, to be able to tie Google for startups to our business um, gives us credibility. Um, it's brought exposure to us through media opportunities. We were, I, I feel, um, I credit it to us being on the recent 2023 20, um, startups to watch list here in Atlanta. Um, had a feature in Hypopotamus the other day that came through um, Google's PR um, agency. And so um, it really just reaches broadly um, and the impacts have been um, tremendous for us and invaluable. So, um, you know, I encourage everyone to 
take advantage of it, but even to, to comments that I think Victoria and really all of the panelists talked about, think about how this opportunity could really help your business and think of it, yes, about the cash and how you would use that, but also overall how the Google network can help power your business forward. Thanks, Courtney. That was a fantastic answer and completely agree that you, um, you, you get what you put in um, into into the program. Um, also, a shout to that fantastic article and hype that uh, that uh, our agency um, helped uh, help place uh, recently. I thought it, it read super well. Um, Camille, how about you? Uh, yeah, of course. So, just listening to Courtney and Jim, right? The underlining notion that we all were maybe desperate to find, maybe we didn't know, but I wanted to be taken seriously, right? I was sick of people not taking me seriously. And we all have very complex backgrounds and complex identities. And once you start to take something at your own risk and bet on yourself, that is a very vulnerable place to be. And I come from an immigrant background. I also come from an immigrant background where they were already discriminated so much against that they felt as if if they had to be educated in order to be taken seriously. That's a whole other conversation about Americanization, right, in the United States. But that was a very hard identity for me to understand as a brown skinned young girl in a very white driven community. And so I also at so many facets of my life just were, was not taken seriously because I wasn't good at school because I didn't like the way they taught me or entertained me, but I had ideas and I usually just took action and realized that I can beat people if I take action, but we are kidding ourselves if we aren't talking about that we do need more people to take chances on the people that may not have their revenue stream coming in, but God damn, they are working on something that's really needed. Like Jim, I live in Chicago and I have a car. Parking is an important thing. So Goody Nation and Google, I'm not a non, I'm a, not a technical founder. They put me in a group strategically with coders and developers. And this summer, those people were by my side and I got through it and now I'm thriving. And this is a safe place and it's really hard to be vulnerable because everyone feels like they need to be better or they're like conscious about what other people are thinking, but you started something and Goody and Google nation just want to help you out. So that's really important. Thank you. Wow. I am now more inspired. Should I apply to the founders fund? Maybe. Um, so one of the questions that we have coming in uh, from uh, Corazon um, is um, around um, sales and and if the founder funds um, helped uh, help with sales at all. I think of our sales academy. Um, so Courtney or Jim, did either of you participate um, in in the sales academy portion? Would, would either of you mind um, chiming in how, what that was like and if that was helpful to um, to you guys? I'm happy to go. I don't know. I'll go. I'll jump in. So um, yes, I did Founders Academy. Um, I actually did Founders, or I'm sorry, Sales Academy. I actually did it as part of Founders Academy, which um, uh, I don't know the status of that, but either way, it's offered to the Founders Fund. And I highly encourage everybody to participate in it. Um, that is actually for a long time, one of the thing, things I would tell people was incredibly valuable to me versus, you know, you hear so much about traction, go have traction in the fundraising world and the startup world, um, but not so much teaching you, how do you go and get it? <laughs> and so uh, it's just come back to me when you got it. And so um, I think it is, I'll put it like this, our team is looking to add a full-time sales resource. And I have a very clear kind of avatar of what I want that person to be, which is not a traditional salesperson. And the reason, the way I socialize it is we've learned what we need to learn and have the tools and resources for Sales Academy. I don't want a traditional salesperson. I want someone who comes from my industry, understands the problems, and we can teach them how to sell. Like that's what um, Sales Academy will do. It will give you a confidence. Um, to go into um, conversations and sales conversations and close those deals. Um, and like I said, it can equip anybody who's not comfortable with sales to go do it. And I'm very like emphatic about that. I said, I don't, I want someone from the industry and we will teach them how to sell and sales academy is what got us there. Thank you. Um, 
that program, just so you're all aware, what we did for our, our sales training um, that's offered to our Founders Fund recipients is um, within Google, there are our, sales, our own sales teams that get training. Um, and what we did is the teams that are working on Google's highest dollar accounts, you know, the big spenders for Google's ads product, for example, imagine the Nikes or Home Depots of the world, the folks cutting massive, uh, massive ads related checks. Um, who trains those 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 pitch teams? Um, and there is this incredible uh, team inside of Google that trains those teams that are off, off asking for for these high dollar um, amounts. Um, we approached that team and said, "Hey, you guys are so good at what you're doing. Um, what would it look like if we just tweaked uh, that training directly for founders?" Um, and instead of, you know, uh, training on how a large mature business and a mature sales team might be able to pitch to um, a customer, what would that training look like for a founder who's looking to craft a story or a pitch to an investor, to an employee, a potential employee, to a potential strategic partner? Um, and we sort of crafted that curriculum um, over time and have sort of honed it over, over the past few years. Um, it's one of my, I, I've taken this uh, training myself, like, five times probably um, and have found it incredibly, uh, incredibly useful. Um, so one question that um, I, I have for, for you, uh, for each of you, um, can you each share a milestone that you recently hit and how Google for Startups um, may have played a role or helped along that journey? I guess the sort of nature of the question or the spirit of the question is um, to help our, 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 our viewers um, just get some contextual understanding of, of the kind of progress uh, where you are in the business as people are thinking about um, just starting to apply. Um, where are you particularly? What are some kind of milestones that can kind of like frame uh, frame frame their understanding of, of um, a company that has going gone through our programs, um, you know, uh, to 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 help them um, ahead of their application? So um, I will turn to you, Camille. Would you mind sharing any any sort of milestones that you've recently hit and how how Google's uh, been helpful along that? Yeah, of course. And this is a very open space. Um, so I will be very candid with you. We are, my co-founder and I, we're, we're also best friends. We come from, I come from the advertising world. She comes from the product tech marketing world. And we had an idea and we just took action, asked a lot of questions and figured out how to make something like this happen because we soon felt hungry to be the first ones to ever create something like this. So we took the proper steps, but what I hinted at earlier in my introduction was that Google and Goody Nation took me seriously as a non-technical co-founder who created and invented a technical desktop application that helps individuals. So like I said, they placed me in a, a group with coders and people who had applications and very technical businesses. So I got to sit with those individuals for so many hours to gauge and pick their brains. And so this year we have, we've raised capital through one single angel investor. We're very fortunate. We're keeping it in a silo. It's like our business school in a box, right? So we're trying to use that capital this year to prove out B2B. So if we're having a desktop application and we're trying to go to Ernst and Young's and the Googles of the world and say, your sales teams need this to sell better because you are choosing the hybrid work life. Vodium is that tool. Well, we need, we needed to work with a development team. That's a full squad and understands how to work with desktop applications within PC dominant environments. And anyone who's understanding of a firewall and all of that, bureaucratic PC stuff. It's really hard to implement your stuff in that and then also get adopted. So Google and Goody Nation like made my co-founder co and I like take a big risk but um, and sign with Avanade and it's a pretty, 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 pretty big contract. But in order to uh, make big bets, we have to take big risks. And isn't that the startup world? So that's, that's my story. Thank you. And um, Jim, I want to ask this question to you. And I know you also um, want to want to mention um, uh, some thoughts about the previous question as well. Would you mind sharing any what sort of milestones you've recently hit and how, how Google may have um, may have played a role along that journey? Sure. So 
that's funny. The previous thing was uh, the the sales process. You guys taught us, you know, like ordering from Starbucks. There's like certain things that you do. It's like it was like a peek behind the curtain. I was like, I didn't even know. Like, what's an SDR, right? <laughs> So, you know, just because I'm a technical co-founder doesn't mean that I know everything, right? I definitely didn't know the sales side of things. So um, as far as a milestone, um, so uh, I'm a little bit different, right? You, Camille's talking about going big, right? So I'm all for going big. So uh, one of the things that we did was um, we were pushing to start doing work with the federal government. Because one of the things that we keep hearing from people is, oh, every time I go to a new city, I have to download a new app. So I was like, oh, great. Well, why don't we work with the federal government in order to get into every single city and every single municipality entire, across the entire United States. So one of the things that Google did was they were like, "I now remember, I'm the technical one. Google was like, hey, let me introduce you to these people who can make sure that everything is already in place. So when the government says yes, we just turn it on, right? So um, yeah, that process was significantly easier than I thought it was going to be. So um, yeah, for us to be able to, I'm not trying to become a billion dollar business. I want to get a billion dollars in revenue, right? So like in order for us to get there, like we, now we have the foundation, like the server foundation. And, you know, when it's time for us to get into data models and things along those lines, everything is already in place. So now all we have to do is start plugging in and start moving. Awesome. Thank you. I think a great example of um, that you're as a, as a founders fund recipient, you're stuck with us. Uh, you, you have to hang out with us. Um, I prefer phone calls, um, just random phone calls if you get a phone if you're a recipient and you get a phone call from the sticks of eastern washington state uh that is me um and i'm probably sharing some absurd opportunity uh or offer to introduction or connection or resource your way um and i know jim's been a recipient of that random phone call um and um, there will be many more very soon uh courtney um, how about yourself any milestones that you've recently google uh was involved in these yeah, so we, um, I want one thing I mentioned um, was so I started out at the start of 2022. I was still a team of one solo founder, again, non technical. Um, and we did start building a team of uh, people in pretty like flex roles um, and working part time, but I've been solely um, dedicated to it. But um, as a result of Founders Fund One, I was able to hire my the next uh, full-time employee for us, which has been incredibly critical. We had some clear things we knew we needed to be able to do to advance the business. And that role does that. Um, the other thing I've been, I'm, I'm always fully aware of like kind of what I'm doing while on screen. And so I, it might be obvious that I was looking down a little bit because I was trying to find my pitch deck from my application last year to give a, you know, a firm number. And so one thing that we're proud of right now, or that I can say since, um, getting into the black for receiving this like award and honor is that we 4 x our users um, on our platform, our user signups. Um, so we had over a hundred back when I was doing the application, we have well over 400 now. Um, now we are, we do vet everybody so they don't all <laughs> get on there, but um, that was a big deal because we put a lot, that's where we really put a lot of energy and effort last year. We were able to put some investments into our marketing outreach and our strategies there. Um, and our customer retention with our large enterprise accounts has been um, also, you know, really successful. Um, and I would say just, again, from all the resources and the ways in which we continue to try to be a platform and a, a, a tech enabled service business that is centered on like de delivering value to our customers. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of other ways that I would say Google has contributed to our successes, and some of them are at much more micro or even tactical levels. But I think, again, that's the testament to the value of the, um, the program, because you'll get access to people who will get in the weeds with you and help you problem solve and be, you know, thought partners to you. Awesome. Congrats on that incredible growth, Courtney. That's that's really, Thank really you. amazing. Um, I um, want to turn to one question that um, has just popped in, which is um, how many steps are there in the process before selections are announced? Um, we try to make it very simple for applicants. Um, we know that 
it's not an it's not a small ask um, to be filling out all of these questions, to be sending us videos, to like have to put so much thought into something, um, and then you know continue to be asked more questions and then given a, another you know uh, application just to really double check and then maybe another video. We really want to um, minimize those steps in the process and then just do all of that in the back end, um, the the sort of reviews that in the steps that you don't have to have to be a part of. Um, so we'll think about this in two different um, two different facets. There is the steps that Google and our partners and investors take. Um, we sort of have um, steps where we ask the market, we ask investors, um, community and ecosystem leaders um, to help us through our application reviews. Um, Goody Nation and, and Joey, uh, his team um, will look at applications. We want to understand, does the market believe in these companies as well? You know, there's one, it's one thing for Google uh, to, to sort of um, be able to say, hey, this company is awesome, but um, can we work with some really incredible investors, some really, really thoughtful community leaders and say, hey, um, you, you guys should really pay attention to this company in case we miss something. We have sort of, it's not just Google making that decision. We, we've enlisted an amazing roster of, uh, of, of leaders and investors and founders, former recipients to, to sort of help us in that journey. And then secondly, <clears throat> that application is shared through different parts of Google. You know, earlier I mentioned we really want to be more than a check. Um, and so what we do is we share application with a couple of key individuals that represent different products that could be useful, whether that's Google Cloud, um, who can help on like some technical kind of ideas. Hey, this company is really cool. And I think that our teams could be useful from an AI integration standpoint or a cloud platform standpoint. Give them a look. Or our ads team hey, this company is perfect for ads. If they just had some hands-on support, they could have a ton of user growth. Um, the same goes for Google Play, for example. Is there opportunity for our Play teams to help with a mobile app? And so we'll kind of circulate after we have that sort of external review. It goes internal to those key product areas that are outside of our own team. And then lastly, um, Google for Startups proper will be able to have a look at that. Again, that's all the back end. There's nothing asked of you beyond that. At the towards the end, and we say, okay, here's this sort of list of, of amazing companies that, that we'd like to be working with. Um, we do reserve the right to be able to uh, get on the phone with you for you know 15, 20 minutes um, to, to uh, ask a couple of clarifying questions, but then really keep it as simple as that. Um, you know, if there's any, you know, last last questions that we're on the fence about, we just need some some sort of clarity. Um, you know, we'll say, hey, let's jump on the phone again. I'm an analog phone call guy, um, and, uh, and and we'll just get that sort of clarification before giving a decision. Um, so the takeaway there is um, we don't take this application, the formal application, lightly. That's why it is so substantive. But when you complete it, we don't want to ask more of your time. Um, and, we, and, and you can just go on, go on with your life. We've also structured many of these questions to be um, questions that you've probably already at, been asked for other uh, startup programs, for other capital programs, and of course, questions that you're already thinking about for your current fundraise. We don't want you to have to extend yourself and jump through hoops um, just to be able to, to get a successful application in. So that's uh, to answer uh, to answer that audience question. Um, I, I want to get that uh, get that across. Um, one question I have for you is, um, you know, you you sort of answered what's uh, what what are some milestones that each of you have, you know, recently uh, accomplished. One last question to that is, what's next? What are the next milestones for, um, let's say, six months? Um, and you know, anything. Um, Anything that, that you've sort of uh, learned over the past uh, year or two to sort of help you on that journey. So I guess what's next for each of your businesses? What's that thing? You know, Courtney, you mentioned Forex user growth um, since we started working. What's the next six month goal um, that, that's on your mind? So we're, you know, we're a two sided marketplace. So the ongoing challenge is always how are you, you know, balancing of the supply and demand side. Um, we put a lot of rigor and effort into our freelancer side because that's such a key part of our value proposition to the clients. So our number one focus right now is revenue growth. You know, as uh, Jim said, we want a billion in revenue, you know, not to be spending all of our time chasing money or on uh 
you know, that or valuations. So um, growth introduction, connecting with key decision makers at um, large enterprises, particularly um, in the communications, marketing and HR spaces, those tend to be the, the decision makers who hire us. Um, and so, you know, I'll, you ask six months, I'll say our full year goal is to have 25 um, enterprise accounts um, total. So we are hustling, pounding the pavement and just looking for connections and introductions in that way. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Jim, milestones for the next six yeah. months. Besides I'll just say, uh, yeah, I will just say um, doing work with the federal government, right? Um, we, there's a lot of money there. So uh, we, we got some really good news yesterday. So um, I, it's one of those things where, you know, I'm keeping the, not going to really talk about it right, right now. You will hear about it soon enough, Danny, I promise. <laughs> Perfect. But that's what I want to get done over the next six months. Awesome. How about you, Camille? Um, well, Jim, I was in politics for years and was born in Washington, D.C. So, like, maybe we should. I want to I want to pick your brain on things. Uh, got a lot of federal government people now. Um, my my similar to Courtney is like if you want to get really, really technical. So it's my co-founder and myself. We hired a director of marketing. We tried to hire a sales of VP early last year. This was well before I even knew about Google and Goody Nation and that they had like a sales training. We Well, that year would have been completely different if we would have had it probably sooner rather than later. We, heard, we, we learned a lot of hard things last year, but I genuinely believe it was for a reason. So we've proven out a formula for B2C. So Mary and I are pivoting, doing B2B, and it's going to be the both of us using our network, doing grassroots, getting our user personas really, really tight, going to, you know, our dad's friends, my friends who maybe have cousins that I know are in the markets that we want to target and we have the user personas to, to sell to them. We are also doing our due diligence because we are non-technical co-founders. We have all the implementation guides that any InfoSec team or any IT team would need. So we are doing our due diligence, really being prepared because when come Q2, Mary and I won't have time to do a lot of stuff. So we're like, we already have that. We already have that. We already have that. We already have that. Um, so we can be laser focused on getting revenue like Courtney and Jim. So money. Money, money. Um, thank you, Camille. Um, so, you know, people might ask you sometimes, what's your love language? Some people uh, are a words of affirmation guy or they're like a physical touch woman, like what, whatever that might be. Um, one of my love languages is gifts, love gifts, little like treats, Sour Patch Kids in particular, if you're feeling generous. Um, we have a gift to share with all our today. And it's actually that um, because you came and you sort of showed a willingness and, and interest um, in, um, in our funds, we are going to give you early access to application. So um, we will be moving the application window um, and which will have a, a large you know, public promotion on the 28th. You will get a head start starting basically right after this uh, this conversation. Um, Kai and our team will send an email to, to all of our viewers to give you uh, information on um, how to apply early. Um, and you'll be able to get a head start. You'll also receive a success guide for that application where we've taken um, you know, in lessons learned and sort of tips and tricks on how to think through each of the components of the application just to give you some additional best practices. And lastly, a link to the recording so you can hear, hear Courtney, Camille, and Jim for eternity. Um, and uh, I think that's, um, that's it. We really are grateful for you all tuning in. I'll hand it over back to Kai to help close us out. Awesome. Thank you so much, Danny. And thank you to our awesome founders who've been able to share more about their experience. And I, too, speak the love language of gifts. So hopefully this is an awesome opportunity for you all to get a head start. Um, thank you all for the participation in today's event. Um, you've all asked questions. We haven't been able to get to all of them, but I've documented them to make sure that they're shared in the success guide as we follow up. Um, but it was um, really great to be able to connect with you all. Please be on the lookout following this call for the application success guide, which will include the early access to the application, best practices for applying in the recording of this session for you to view ahead of you of submitting your application. Again, thank you for joining us and we'll look forward to seeing you soon.